you want to become more productive. You want to have a higher output, do more, uh, produce more, and that you think is going to be the answer to achieving your dreams. You're dead wrong. Actually, what you need to do is do far less. Hi, I'm Eric, and today I want to talk to you about the power of the 80-20 principle, the Pareto principle, which many of us have heard of, but I want to make this more practical and actionable for you so that, number one, you don't just understand the theory behind it and the power of the principle, but that you can translate it to both your business and life so you can achieve way better results. Now, 80-20 is something I didn't appreciate at all. Why? Because I had perfectionist tendencies that made me want to do, you know, 100% effort on everything and the, you know, absolute, uh, uh, you know, 24 hours worth of effort when far less effort could have worked to produce, a, you know, a, a similar or even a, a, a better result, frankly. And what I meant, what I mean is that I was absolutely overwhelming myself with the amount of detail and the amount of work required to go into a project. And look, I, I can imagine you at times when you've been working on things, you've, you've probably felt that oh, there's just no way I'm going to get this done. There's just so much that I have to do. You know, I, I, I have to do all this research and then I got to write the report and then I got to figure out how to best present it. And, and it just goes on and on and on and it feels like insurmountable. You know, the business plan that I need to make. I have so much, so many different sections of it that I have to compile and put that all together. And um, uh, the relationships that I have, you know, with my family members. There's uh, so many different things that they wanted to do. And, you know, where do I have the time to fit that all into my day? And, okay, so that's all of that is not 80-20 thinking. That's 100% thinking. I need to put in 100% effort for 100% result. Here's the beauty of 80-20. True 80-20 is recognizing what's the 20% of effort, the one-fifth of the effort required, not to deliver 100% of the result, but to deliver just 80%, a good enough result such that you can move on to the next thing. I'll give you an example through, uh, uh, from my professional career. So um, I've done a variety of things uh, in life. I you know, have advised CEOs while uh, a consultant at McKinsey and Company. I helped build up Skype uh, during its early days before we sold to eBay back in 2005. Uh, and then after that, I decided to try my hand at building a chain of Mexican restaurants. Um, I had no idea what I was doing, um, but I figured it out through the 80-20 principle and ended up creating an award-winning brand in the process. When it comes to building a quick service Mexican restaurant chain as we were doing, there's a lot of things that you can be focused on. So for example, you can be focused on the ambience, you can be focused on the service, you can be focused on the food. But we can't be everything to everyone and we can't focus on all things. So I just simply asked myself, what are the 20% of things that I could focus on that would lead to 80% of the guest satisfaction? And I zeroed in on the food. Now, most people would stop there and they would say, for example, if they were also a quick service food brand or a restaurant brand, they would say that we're also all about the food. But we went an 80-20 level deeper and we asked ourselves, okay, within food, you have texture, aroma, flavor, appearance. What's the 20% of all the factors within the food that would drive 80% of the result? And we zeroed in on flavor because at the end of the day, if it doesn't taste great, nobody's coming back. They don't care how long you've cooked it, what ingredients you've made it with. If it tastes awful, they're out of there. Um, so we focused on the flavor, but we didn't stop there. We asked ourselves, okay, with these 17 different meal components, what are the 20% of these meal components which will create 80% of the flavor? And then we zeroed in on uh, three different meal components to be exact. And then we looked at the recipes for those meal components and we said, okay, in this ingredient list, what are the 20% of ingredients which will drive 80% of the flavor in those recipes? Before you know it, we're in the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico, shaking hands with local farmers. Why? Because we had zeroed in through this 80-20 process on a handful of select ingredients that we had to get at the proper quality and price directly from the source in order to impart the right flavor in our food to create that 80% gain.
guest satisfaction target we were going for with only 20% of the effort. Now, where might 80-20 analysis help you in life? You know, there's probably, uh, it, wherever you are in your life today, 80% of where you are today will probably be determined by 20% of the choices that you've made. 80% um, of where you could go into the future will be determined by just a handful of choices that you make next. You know, it's all about leverage. It's all about finding what's the, the subset of activities that will yield the highest results, right? Things are not linear. You can't do everything for everyone. Let me give you another way to break this down. Let's break this down mathematically as an alternative. Let's say, for example, you're working on a project. And the output of this project, we're going to keep this super simple. So the output of this project will be $500 of value. So if you work on this project uh, to its completion, get it, you know, 100% done, you'll be able to earn $500. And let's say it's going to take five hours to do that project. Well, five hours equals $500. And you might say, well, that sounds pretty good. I've earned five hundred dollars for five hours, hundred dollars an hour. That's great. I'm happy. Why wouldn't I be happy? You know, hundred dollars an hour. It's a pretty good rate of return, isn't it? Well, what if you could have worked just one hour, twenty percent of the hours, and created a product or a service which wasn't hundred percent, and maybe you couldn't therefore charge as much for it, and only produce four hundred dollars of value. Now, the first guy says, ha, 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 you know, I've done $500 of value, you've done 400 you know, I'm winning. Ah, but the second guy says, yeah, yeah, but you're not looking at what I use my next remaining four hours for. Because I did the next project in 80-20 style, and then the next, and then the next, and then the next. Each time using just a single hour to produce something with 80% of the value, $400, right? So five hours, $400 per hour. The 80-20 person in this example has produced $2,000 worth of value versus the 100 for 100 effort for result person who's produced $500 of value. So mathematically speaking, in this example, the power of 80-20 has done what? It's yielded a four times greater return over the same period of time. Now, things don't line up perfectly like this, and we're not always perfectly efficient, so don't expect like this mathematics to work out entirely like this all the time. But the point I'm trying to make is that if you really focus and look for leverage, if you really look for what's the 20% of the effort that will yield 80% of the result, that will yield 80% of the guest satisfaction, that will create 80% of the movement in my life, then you can spend far less time agonizing over all the details and just get on to that next thing. And it doesn't just relate to projects. It can also relate to relationships. You may, you may know 20 people in your professional circle. I bet, if you really think about it, four of those peoples, uh, four, four, four of the peoples, people, four of those people, <laughs> four of those people are the real movers and shakers, right? So <clears throat> those four relationships, are you spending enough time with those people? And if you really grew those relationships, could they help move the needle in, in your life, you know, rather than you spending time on those other 16 relationships? Again, this is just an example. I'm not saying that you actually have 20 people in your life, but I think you get the point. Um, <clears throat> equally, when we think about our families, let's take this to the home front for a second. So when we think about our families, often we think about improving our relationship with, say, a spouse or a child. And we think about all the different things that we could be doing to improve the relationship. And it can become a little bit overwhelming when actually, yeah, but what's the 20% of things that we could be doing that would improve, that would create 80% of the result? I asked my wife this question, and you know what she told me? She said, just spend more carefree, no agenda time with me. What a relief. I don't have to think about what it is that we should be doing, what box that I should be ticking. Her 80-20... Her 20% of the effort for me was that if I just focus on that one thing, that will create 80% of the satisfaction that she gets you know, from our time together. 
And you can equally think about with this with your children. Similarly, probably with your kids, there will be a myriad of things that you could be doing. But what's the 20% of things that you could do which would create you know, 80% of the smiles on your children's faces? So let me wrap this up by <clears throat> stressing the point that you have a huge opportunity. You can literally change the whole trajectory of your life if you recognize that you don't, don't need to keep putting in a 100 for a 100 return, that you can look for the 80-20 in all that you do on the health front, on the work front, on the home front. 20% of your actions and choices, generally speaking, will probably lead to 80% of your satisfaction and results. What's the 80-20 in your life? What's the 80-20 in your business? And if you think that that's something I could help you with, please he head over to my website at ericpartaker.com where you can subscribe to my newsletter to find more practical advice like this, plus a myriad of other high performance topics, ways to become a better leader, and ultimately how to close that gap between who you are and who you're capable of being.